it's Matt here from Go Green Autos. So I've got two Hyundai Ionics here. Uh, this one obviously is the previous shape that came out in 2016 to 2020. And that's got the 28 kilowatt hour battery. And then I've got the new revised shape here, which came out in 2020. It's got a 38 kilowatt hour battery. So these are both the same trim levels. They're both uh, a premium model and obviously both in white. So while I've got two identical cars, old model, new model here, I thought I'd make this video showing you the differences between them. So the new model here isn't a complete new model, it's just a model refresh, it's basically the same car, it's just got a slightly different uh, front end, a different uh, fake grille and, and lights, different rear lights, different interior, but it's got that new slightly larger battery pack. So let's start with the battery packs. The original model has a 30.5 kilowatt hour uh, battery pack and of that 28 kilowatt hours is usable by the driver that's why it's called the 28 kilowatt hour model and the newer model has a 40.4 kilowatt hour pack with 38.3 kilowatt hours of usable storage space so that's roughly a 35 percent improvement and that bigger battery pack gives you more range basically so let's look again at the first model i drive one of these myself and they are incredibly efficient cars and obviously the range depends on driving efficiency at the time but let's just say we're going to get an average of four and a half miles per kilowatt hour which is incredibly easy in one of these and to be honest that's sort of winter driving in one of these uh, because these will easily do one and a half miles um, more per kilowatt hour than other electric cars but anyway let's base it on four and a half miles per kilowatt hour so the older model you're going to get 126 miles uh, which I would just say I'm getting 119 on mine at the moment and we're sort of uh, in freezing temperatures the new model if you were to drive at four and a half miles per kilowatt hour on average you're going to get 172 miles but as I said, these are very efficient cars and in the summer, if you drive efficiently, you're going to get a lot more. You can easily drive these at um, five and a half, six, six and a half miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, I've even got um, even as high as 8.4 in my own. So the motors in these look absolutely identical. Visually, you cannot tell the difference between the new model here and the old model here. However, the power of the new model has uh, improved. So the older model has a 120 PS uh, motor that's 88 kilowatts producing 295 newton meters of torque. Whereas the new model, even though it looks the same motor, they've upped the power. So it's now 136 PS, which is 100 kilowatt, but it produces exactly the same torque, 200 and 95 newton meters however on both cars the performance figures are exactly the same they've got exactly the same top speed and they do exactly the same 0 to 62 which is 9.9 .9 seconds and driving it obviously i said i drive one of these when i got in this and drove this for the first time didn't feel any different to the previous generation and why it is is this car is actually slightly heavier than the older car so the previous model, uh, depending whether it's a premium or a premium SE, was 1,420 kilos for the premium, and the premium SE was 1,475 kilos. And we jump to the new one, it's now slightly heavier. It's 1,572 kilos for the premium, or 1,575 kilos for the premium SE. And that's obviously why there's no performance difference between the two, even though this one has got a little bit more power. And as I said, looking under the bonnet, looks absolutely no difference between the two. Um, the only thing that I have noticed that's changed on the older model, they use green coolant in the coolant bottle, and we've just got a hose running out the bottom. And on the new one, they now use blue coolant. Not that that makes any difference, but we've got a different hose with another uh, sensor here on it um, but everything else just looks absolutely identical and obviously any changes underneath are very very minimal so let's talk about styling now because that's where the changes are and primarily at the front end so the previous model you had this very smooth front end where there would be a grille on the hybrid model it's just very smooth plastic which personally i really like it just makes it look a bit different to normal cars uh, and it's all about aerodynamics and that sort of all keys in because it's nice and smooth 
um, because obviously, as I said, these are very efficient and the whole car is built around efficiency. When we get to the new model, they've now done away with that and gone back to a fake grille. Uh, this also does stand uh, proud, so there is a gap all around. Um, and then you get this um, pattern in the plastic, which uh, I would imagine is a nightmare when it gets very dirty to clean all of that, but still. And you have these vents at the front, and these vents, you can see it's starting to wobble there. They actually move up to allow additional cooling when the car needs it, and when it doesn't, they stay shut to keep it more efficient. Both cars still have this smooth high-endo badge because they put the radar behind there for the autonomous braking and the adaptive cruise control but on the old model it's more upright and a little bit more prominent because you've got that sort of nose effect on the front. The older model had coloured trim, uh, most of the models get this copper effect trim around the car along the front, along the doors at the back, inside in the uh, around the dash and on the seats but also in the headlights whereas the new model they've done away with that and it's now just silver but you don't get the same effect in the headlights but they are different headlights we've now gone to square uh, LED blocks because they've got LED headlights whereas here we've got round headlights um, dip beam is LED but high beam is uh, halogen and then we've got an LED um, daytime running light there, LED daytime running lights down here, but they've now gone to double strips of LED lights down here. Also this air intake on the front bumper isn't quite so prominent. Um, there is still a gap there, but I'm not sure whether that plastic opens up like it does on the front. Um, but we've still got the slot here behind the back, which um, the air comes out of, whereas on the older model this is much larger and uh, still got the same slot here in the wheel arch. If you stand back and look at the cars again you can see it really is only the headlights, the front grille area and the daytime running lights which has changed. The general uh, shape of the front bumper is pretty much identical as is that lower intake um, and obviously the bonnet it's all still the same. The other key thing that has changed is the alloy wheel design. So the older model had this alloy wheel design where you've got painted aluminium with these black plastic inserts and on the white cars this was white. My own car is blue and you have a grey uh, painted aluminium with uh, grey inserts I think. I'm trying to think remember now I might cut in a picture of my car. Um, but then the new model has a completely different wheel design. Um, we've still got these sort of plastic inserts to smooth out the spokes because that keeps it more aerodynamic, but it's a much more fussy design. Um, personally, I don't like them. I think they're a bit too fussy and I prefer the smoother, more simple look of the previous design and these won't be anywhere as easy to clean. But then that said, cleaning alloy wheels on electric cars isn't a problem because you don't get the brake dust, particularly with these because you've got proper one pedal driving with these. And then looking down on the side profile, nothing has changed apart from the alloy wheels. All exactly the same, door handles, that bottom strip is all the same, apart from which now uh, we've lost the copper strip and we've got a silver strip. Uh, but you've got illuminated door handles. Um, charging port is still there on the side where um, the fuel filler cap is on the hybrids. And then looking around the back, not much has changed here either. It is just different lights. So I've turned the lights on as you can see and uh, I personally like the light design on the older model. Um, this was a unique design for the electric models. The hybrid models had a different lamp cluster, but there's a lot going on, uh, but you get this um, LED, um, I think they call it neon effect. It's where you can't see the light source anyway, and all these marks in the light. I do quite like the design, the design of the lights on the old model. Let me look at the new model. Um, it's not flashing, that's just the camera making it look like it is flashing. Uh, but we've got this broken um, crystal effect in these two bits and then two strips of that sort of neon effect. Personally I don't think they're as nice and they are quite a lot smaller. The old model used all of this um, to illuminate whereas they've gone much smaller now. 
uh, but you know it's a very minor thing. The rest of it at the back is absolutely identical apart from this plastic trim has gone a little bit darker on the newer model compared to the older model but all exactly the same design there's no other changes at the back here. One small change uh, is the depth of the boot. This is the older model and you get this uh, floor here and then you get a bit of storage underneath and you can fit the um, cargo cover under the floor there which is great. Uh, we've got the subwoofer here but if we look at that sort of distance there we've got uh, three inches or so and then we look at the new model it's raised up a little bit so we've got the same false floor but it just doesn't feel quite so integrated um, there's there's gaps here it's it's still all the same we can still fit the parcel shelf in there but it's just raised up a little bit and it's not quite so um, snug fitting and integrated as the other one um, I think we've possibly have we gained a pocket yes we have we've gained we don't have a pocket here on the old one but the new one we've gained a side pocket but um, yeah so there's that benefit I suppose but that floor is a little bit higher and not so well filled fitting um, and all just feels a bit, little bit loose and cheap to be honest and it's not like it's not fitted properly but anyway it's a very minor thing the um, parcel self cover it's all absolutely identical nothing else to change at the back. So now on the inside this is where the other major changes are um, they've basically changed the instrument cluster and dash and they've changed the fabric on the seats so let's talk about seats first the old model had this type of fabric on the premium cars uh, a grey fabric lots of different materials we've got three different material uh, combinations and you get this sort of copper effect colour in the seats to match the trim around the console and the lights and the bumper and the bottom of the doors and that sort of thing whereas if we go across to the new car because we've lost the copper idea we now just have silver trim around the car um, and the seats have gone to plain grey which I think is probably a bit better they look a bit classier um, it's a very nice material very um, hugging uh, and yeah the, probably the seats look better uh, but we've obviously lost that copper trim which I quite like the little copper accents all around so change of scenery now um, I hadn't realized yesterday when I was making this video that the microphone had unplugged itself from the camera and the rest of my filming was ruined because I had no sound and I come in on a Sunday and do the filming normally because it's nice and quiet on a Sunday in the trading estate normally during the week and on Saturday it's just too much background noise so I have a very limited window that I can make these videos so I'm now having to film inside the unit because uh, it's noisy outside and it's also raining. So the rest of this video, we're going to be inside the unit here. So now we're in the original Ionic and uh, I will show you the animations here on the display and uh, we will now start it up. Um, so on the original car, I hope you can see okay, uh, because it is a little bit dark, but we've got the uh, touchscreen sort of built into the dash. We've got buttons for all of the um, climate control here and all of your multimedia stuff. Um, and I do like the layout of the Ionic. Um, in fact, I like the ergonomics of all Kia and Hyundai cars. There might be a lot of buttons, but they get it just right. Um, so yeah with these cars you have android auto and apple carplay um, and uh, yeah they're a very nice place to be the um, dash up here is very simple we've got our power meter here um, speedo in the middle and this is our battery pack and then this screen here you can change with these buttons up here and you can have various information on there including uh, satellite navigation directions if you're using the inbuilt sat nav if you're using uh, phone mirroring Android Auto or Apple CarPlay then you don't get that function up on that second screen but yes very nice stash to use 
Um, we've also got different drive modes using this button down here. Um, we can change the drive mode. So that's normal driving, that's sport mode, the dash turns red. You then also don't have speed around the outside. The speed goes to the middle and this is power around the outside. And you can flick it again to go to uh, eco mode and then in eco mode the um, top speed is capped and uh, you don't get the full um, the full speed around the outside so yeah nice place to be as I said um, and what we'll do now is jump into the newer model and look at the differences okay so we're inside the new car now and uh, if I just open the door shut the door there we will see the new animations there up on the dash and then if I hit the power button there and start it up you can see the new animations there so what's changed on the new car is your instrument panel up there is different and this center console here is different we've got a new larger wider screen it's no longer sort of integrated into the dash it's got this sort of stuck on uh, feel which um, to be honest all modern cars have sort of gone that way I didn't like the look of it when I first saw it in pictures but actually when you sat in here it is nice um, the other change is we no longer have buttons they're all these touch sensitive buttons behind this sort of um, well it's made to feel like glass but it's a plastic panel there's no physical buttons anymore which I don't like uh, they're not easiest things to find you have to if you're driving and it's on a bumpy road and your fingers sort of being moved around a bit you have to look um, there's no way of feeling where your hand is um, however that's a small thing because all modern cars have gone this way anyway so you do very soon get used to it what is nice is the new mood lighting along here and along the dash it really does make the dash feel more premium um, and uh, yeah that's a great improvement just as the old car you've got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay um, the screen is very wide in this case it's split into three sections you can change it so you've got more information on the screen and have it in two sections uh, it is very responsive though it's a really nice responsive system and just as always um, I think the uh, the multimedia systems and the um, in-cabin ergonomics on Hyundai's and Kia's are better than most brands they really just do it right um, so very quickly you can sit in here and within a few minutes you've pretty much worked it all out um, on the new car the information behind all of these new buttons is exactly the same uh, some of the graphics are slightly different but it all does the same thing it's just uh, obviously you've got a new screen and a new set of buttons um, but the basics behind it all is all exactly the same and down here as always we've got the drive modes and then when you select the drive modes it changes your dash layout so in sport mode there it's all gone red in eco mode there it's gone green and in normal mode it's all blue so the dash um, is just like the old one you've got our power meter here speedo in the middle and battery on that side but the little screen that was here with all the extra information is now in the middle uh, and it is nicer but it it's a little bit more fussy there's more background graphics so it takes a little bit longer to work out all the information because there's more there in front of you but that's a minor thing you soon get used to it um, and if I use this button here we've got the same screen and you can change the information up there so yeah it's all very similar it's just a slightly different layout of course but everything else in here is the same it's just obviously the mood lighting the new center console here and the new um, screens in front of you uh, the only other thing that's different is we've now got a camera button there where we can push it uh, I think we've got to be in drive let's just put it in drive yeah so we can push it and at any time we can get the rear camera feed up um, straight on a button there which is a little bit different but to be honest you wouldn't use that that often anyway um, so yeah overall um, pretty similar in here apart from just an upgrade on the screen and the buttons the other thing i've just noticed is we've now got a new sos button it's i know it's a bit dark now so it's difficult to see but you didn't get that on the old car the other change with the um, 2020 ionic is we now have an app that you can um, 
use on your phone to connect to the car and that's something that um, most electric cars have uh, but the uh, previous generation Ionic didn't in the UK. There's a few minor changes to the charging. Um, overall pretty similar we've got uh, type 2 AC at the top and then um, DC CCS at the bottom. What has changed is on the old model the AC connector was a 6.6 kilowatt charger it's now been upgraded to a 7.2 kilowatt charger it's not going to make a huge difference it just means that your charging uh, on ac which is primarily going to be at home will just be a little bit quicker um, but of course this car's got a bigger battery so overall it's going to take longer because the battery's got more capacity but you're just going to get a few more miles per hour of charging the ccs charging on the old car hyundai um, stated in the brochure it's 50 kilowatt DC rapid charging however uh, the car actually charged at um, a higher rate and if you were fortunate enough to use a uh, one of these new public rapid chargers that can charge at 100 or 150 kilowatt the old car would actually charge up to 69 kilowatt if the battery was flat enough and the conditions were right I do believe with the new car it now does only charge at 50 kilowatt but it's not going to make a huge difference. I think I've pretty much covered everything. So if you like this video and found it useful please do click that thumbs up button on YouTube. That really does help other people find this channel. And uh, if you haven't subscribe and hit the little bell button to be notified when I upload a new video. And uh, maybe you might want to have a look at the back catalogue of uh, videos on the channel and uh, there will be more coming soon.